those viewers of my channel who've watched my videos on making custom musical instrument transportation cases or road cases uh, will have seen similar views to this piles of 2x2, two two, so-called 2x2, two two, it's inch and a half by inch and a half select pine that I use for the the frame sections of the cases and I've also got enough stock of the masonite that forms the surfaces of the cases and a lot of the craft plywood that I use for inner structures and down here are two or three boxes of spray cans of Krylon industrial spray lacquer the problem I have with doing this and we always use the spray lacquer for several good reasons that I won't go into here but I have to do the work in my basement usually in the winter because uh, the way my house is set up the basement is freezing in the summer when the air conditioning is running but it's comfortable in the winter um, so I do most of my big projects down here in the winter and I just usually tolerated a little bit of painting because I'd make one case at a time most of them weren't that big I'd wear my respirator mask with the particle filter and the activated charcoal filter for the uh, volatiles and that seemed to work pretty well I didn't get high spray painting or anything but I always worried about the fumes in the basement and I'd usually crack the back door a little bit and have a box fan blowing out a little bit try to encourage some of the the volatile laden air to exit and thought well it's a infrequent and kind of rare occurrence I'm not going to worry about it too much but now I've got a whole stack of instruments that need cases and I'm going to be building the cases in one marathon effort that'll take probably at least a month to do and there's going to be a lot of spray painting um, in this little space that I use for doing that. And uh, I decided I needed better ventilation. After viewing a number of websites and talking to manufacturers and trying to describe the situation and figure it out, uh, I determined I needed a exhaust fan, a proper exhaust fan, not one of the little box fans they just don't move enough air uh, I have this 20 by 20 box fan made by TPI I believe is the name I'll try to put the the exact model number in the video and this has got a much more powerful motor much more aggressive blades and it also has the um, the louver type of exit because it's intended to be mounted on an external wall from the inside you just cut a hole and you bolt it into the wall that's not really possible in my situation it needs to be fairly close to where the painting is going on to be as effective as it needs to be and uh, I just don't have any good wall space anywhere near this to put a fan of that size I could fit it up here but guess what's right on the other side of that my air conditioner compressor that's not an available space anywhere else is too far away it wouldn't do the job I want it to do the door is the obvious thing I actually consulted with a local guy who installs exhaust fans and um, he suggested I just put a big doggy door like right in this space and um, not mount the exhaust fan to it but m put the exhaust fan on a little simple you know um, two by four frame or something that'll hold it up vertically so I can kind of position it against the doggy door and just let it blow out the doggy door and I thought I would do that but you know this is a perfectly good steel over uh, probably styrofoam door and um, I'm not sure how much structural integrity I would lose by cutting such a big hole in it also that would be a hole that wouldn't be that hard for somebody to crawl through if they wanted to gain access 
So I don't really like that idea. And I thought about all sorts of ways to bolt something across it for security when I'm not using it and it just seemed like a bigger hassle and I thought I might end up with a unnecessarily weak door as a result. And then I had this bright idea that I can open this door and just fit a sheet of plywood into the door jam um, and have that have a hole in it for the fan and when I do my relatively occasional you know not at all frequent painting activities I can just stick this in this place and then take it down and store it when I'm not using it and I kinda like that idea at least I'm gonna try it and that's the subject of this video I had the Home Depot lumber yard cut down a piece of um, this isn't half inch, it's actually slightly bigger. What's the uh, dimension? The the half inch stuff they had looked like garbage. Too much warpage and stuff. Yeah, this is a, a 9 sixteenths thick, so slightly thicker. And it's still exterior grade, you know, just framing plywood. It's got knots and stuff in it. It's nothing you'd use for anything good, but it should be okay for this. I had them cut it down to the dimensions of the door, which it's an 80 by 36 inch door. And so it may be slightly oversized. I'm going to have to trim it. But I also thought about where do I store this thing when it's not in use. My basement's already pretty full. And uh, also, I'm not sure in my advanced age if I can manipulate this thing into position very well. Uh, and the ceiling is lower than 80 inches from the floor, so I can't just store it vertically up against the wall, because except for the cutout that allows the door to swing, you can see that the door is taller than the ceiling by a few inches. Um, I can't really put it upright anywhere in here. I can store it on its side somewhere, but again, there's precious little room there's machinery and stuff up and storage racks up against every wall. I just didn't see a good place to store it. I thought I might stick it back here behind the table saw where all this junk is now. It would fit here and I might actually end up storing it there. But it has to break down smaller than a door sized panel. So to that end I came up with this design and this is what I'm going to try to build. <clears throat> I've actually built sandwich boards <laughs> along the same lines. This is a, essentially a, a glorified sandwich board design. So I've got my 80 by 36 piece of plywood. Um, I'm going to cut it in half and it's going to have a cutout for the exhaust fan with four studs on it which will just, I can just, uh, once this is mounted in the door, I can just stick the box or the exhaust fan on there and I've got some wing nuts that I can just spin onto these four studs to hold it in place. I'll put some weather stripping around it for a better seal. Uh, it'll have some gate hinges on it. I bought four, I might use three, I might use four, I haven't figured it out yet. The top part will have a cutout with some clear Lexan to act as a surrogate window just so I can see outside more so than um, really needing the light. I just wanted to have some kind of a window there. Um, I'm going to put a couple of strap handles, uh, nylon web belting straps, uh, top and bottom so I can grab with both hands and lift and move this out um, if I need to for kind of emergency egress kind of things. To hold it in place, the right side will fit um, right up against the um, it'll just fit back into this space here between the actual door and the uh, this part of the door jam. So I'll have to kind of move it in this way. And the left side will of course just fit right where the door does normally up against 
here, I can't make I can't have the door be undersized too much because this isn't that much of a lip. And to hold the the right side will stay in place because the door is there and it can't come back too much. If I have to, I can put a couple little wedges in there to, to jam it in place tighter. The left side, however, will be done with a couple of rails, a top one and a bottom one. And they'll just be made out of some of this same one and a half by one and a half pine, which I'll cut a section for the bottom and a section for the top. I'll put a couple of bolts through. I've got some nice stainless steel carriage bolts um, with large shoulders on them. So when I cut off the threaded part, there will still be enough smooth uh, metallic surface sticking out to form pins. And I'll just drill four holes right into the frame. This is solid here. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, again, it's hard to picture with the door in the way, so the door is only a half inch thick here. So it only comes out to about here. And then these uh, one and a half will fit about here, and the pins will go through. And that'll act to press the left side of the plywood up against the door jamb. Each one will have a handle on it. So if I want to get out quickly, I can just yank on those and they'll come out pretty easily. And then the handles here and here can be grabbed and just, you know, wrench this thing sideways. So if, if there's a fire or emergency need to get out, I can move the panel out of the way enough that I can get out uh, without having to undo a bunch of screws or something like that. The half inch approximately plywood should be strong enough, probably as strong as the door is that's currently in place. Um, if I want to leave this up for a few days, it should be secure enough. Um, <clears throat> nobody's going to be able to crawl through the fan. And with this wedged in behind the open door and these pieces in place over these edges, even if somebody kicks here as hard as they would kick the normal door before breaking it, I think this will hold up if somebody decided to try to get in. Um, because these studs will be here, if I flip this part down, it'll form an A shape uh, because it'll hit the studs. I don't want it to hit the studs, actually. So I'm going to put on an extra bit of plywood, just a narrow strip at the top and bottom. It actually uh, needs to be cut a little short on the right side so it doesn't interfere with the door on the hinge side or the door frame on the hinge side and uh, also put the uh, hinges on some strips of 2x4 that'll also allow me to put longer screws in so it goes into more meat of the wood for better grip on the screws rather than just going into this shallow thing it'll be structurally stronger and then because of that raised section, when this thing flips around, there will actually be plenty of room so the top part does not hit the studs. And the studs will just be glued in. They'll pass from the outside in, and there'll be uh, carriage bolts, so there's nothing to unscrew from the outside, and they'll be epoxied into place just to hold them so they don't fall out. And uh, let's see, uh, also the hinges, um, Originally I was going to put bolts in from the outside, but now that I'm going to use the double thickness here, I can use sheet metal screws or wood screws from the hinges into the double thickness of wood. That should be fine. So a pretty simple build, really. Um, basically, I'll have to cut the board, the this board in half, and trim it to fit the door frame. Um, these will be quick and easy to make. These little strips will be quick put on there and glue in place. Most of the work will be attaching the hinges, the, uh, the, the handles. Um, I also mentioned there's dashed lines here, 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 and here. Uh, the reason those are there is I figure the way I'll take this down is I'll remove this piece first. The bottom will still be held into place. 
and then I can um, I don't think the door will get out of the way quite enough for me to flip this entirely down while it's in the door frame I think it'll hit the the open regular door but I still will have a high and a low strap that I can grab one hand on each and lift the whole thing out as one piece. Once I get it clear of the regular door, the top part can flip down and then these two handles that are on the outside but here will actually be on the inside and at the top once it's folded over. So I have two places to grab it and just move this thing around to its storage space. I think that'll work. We'll see. And if it's a total failure, I'm not out that much money on it. I think the plywood cost about $24, and, and most of these other pieces I'm making out of stuff I've already got laying around. Uh, if it's a failure, I'm not out that much money or time, and I can still go with the doggy door solution. By the way, um, I usually use plexiglass or acrylic for projects around the house, making picture frames and other things. Uh, display cabinets for some of my vintage electronic things. Those are fine, but I don't like using it as exterior windows. Um, in number one, plexiglass is a bit brittle. Um, you know, if you hit it with a hammer, there's a good chance it'll crack. And um, for an exterior window like this, in the place where it's at, I wanted to use Lexan because it's just tougher. Um, that's why things like you know motorcycle helmet visors and things like that are typically Lexan instead of plexiglass or acrylic and I used to be able to buy this stuff at the Ace Hardware now they a don't have it they just have plexiglass which they call acrylic um, or they and, and they tell you if you ask if they've got Lexan they say yeah then they point you at the plexiglass they're two different things I checked <laughs> Uh, anyway, after hunting around for several hours yesterday, I couldn't find any place that I thought of that actually carried Lexan, uh, or polycarbonate is the more um, uh, generic term. <clears throat> and then I'm going to a glass supply company that's near me, and they cut me out a 16 by 16 piece, which I thought was probably about the right size. I think it cost me three dollars including the price of cutting it. So that was uh, pretty economical. Of course this has the protective film on it. It's actually clear. But don't let anybody tell you that Lexan and plexiglass are the same thing. They're not. Here are the uh, stainless steel carriage bolts I bought. Um, for the studs, I wanted to make them short. Hopefully I'm not making them too short. Uh, the idea was that they would fit in like this once they're pressed into the wood. And then um, I've got these um, star nuts. And these are, by the way, quarter twenties, I think. And if I press a nut into the recess in here, there, got the nut in there. So they'll go on like that. There's enough clearance um, to go through the double thickness of the um, bezel on the fan. But the screw is only just barely going into the nut here, so I think I need to get the next longest size just for um, just to handle the slop. Okay, I've got the uh, board cut in half, the plywood sheet rather, and uh, trimmed to fit in the door frame nicely. Now I just have to do the same thing for the other half. All right, that's cut to size. There's just the tiny gap around the top. I found that in order to get this in position I needed just a little more clearance and I think there will be a slight slightly larger gap here once I put the hinges on which will take up that very slight slot but you can't really fit it in here if it's that tight of a fit 
I'm going to make sure I've got some good weather stripping up there. And if this is pushed up against the weather stripping, then it doesn't really have that um, light coming through. But I think my idea of how it's going to be wedged in between the edge of the open door and these boards I'm going to put along the sides, I think that'll, that'll do the trick for my needs. When I have uh, plywood or just the exposed ends of a non-plywood board and it's going to be used outdoors or at least subject to rain or sitting in water or what have you, <clears throat> I like to soak some of this uh, PC Petrifier wood hardener into the end grain just to make it resist uh, sucking up more moisture. So I just dribble that along there and um, brush it in a little bit with a disposable foam brush. I'm going to do that now. Okay, I've wicked in three coats of the petrifier along all the edges. Slopped it on good. Now before I do any painting I need to let it dry for 24 hours but I can handle it sooner than that. Okay, here are the four stainless steel shoulder bolts that um, I bought and I'm going to cut them off right at the end of the threaded section which subtracting the inch and a half of the uh, the wood that it's going to go through leaves me um, another inch because it goes up to about two and a half inches there so about an inch to stick into the wood uh, of the door frame which doesn't sound like much but it's that far and I think that's really all that's necessary to do the trick I don't really need it to go in any deeper than that all right everything's got a rounded end and minus the threads of course. Okay, I've got the uh, the side rails as I'm trying to remember to call them drilled out and the heads countersunk. I have to tap those down. I made it a pretty tight fit. And I'll do the other ones like that, but I'm going to use these first as drilling jigs for the holes in the door frame, so I'm not actually going to put the pins in permanently yet. They were designed to go in by stick friction, um, but I can tap them out and then I'll use them as drilling jigs and then put the pins back in. This is the uh, lower panel, and since I'm going to have to put these in like this and then go sideways, into the door frame. I need to make sure I don't put anything on the door or on these panels any closer to the edge than the right side of this. So I've made a little mark there which I'll use as a reference when mounting everything else on this door. And there are the four pieces. These are the hinge plates, the hinge reinforcing plates, and these are the top and bottom. One will go at the top of the door, one will go at the bottom of the door, and those again are just there so it functions well in its folded up sandwich board configuration. Alright, I've marked the outline and the cut line or the cutout line for the window in the upper panel. And in the lower panel, I've marked the outline and the cutout line for the fan. So now I need to get out the old uh, jigsaw. Alright, that first cutout for the fan is made and I'm going to do a test fit. Alright, that fit in there nicely. Alright, now for the uh, window cutout. Okay, I just need to sand the edges 
but I'm not going to do that tonight. What I am going to do tonight is glue on the strips that I cut out previously. All right. Gonna put some uh, pin nails in there. All right. I've got my undersized beam clamps here and quite a few uh, pin nails or short brad nails. These were pin nails I used. Um, and so, let that go overnight. Tomorrow morning I'll do some sanding and then I'll start painting. All the other hardware will be put on once the paint is dried. All right, it's the next morning and I've got all the sanding done using my orbital sander. All right, that's the first coat on one side and all the edges except the bottom. Um, I'm not trying for beauty here, the wood is pretty rough. I just want to have a decent coat so it's protected against the weather. Uh, this is the outer surface so this will get another coat, probably by a, a roller this time. Uh, I used a brush so I could do the edges easier, uh, but I think I'll do a roller for the other surfaces and then I still have to uh, brush paint the back side and that may only get one coat since it won't be exposed to the weather. And in the evening I've got a uh, coat of paint applied to the insides of those two panels. Again. It looks good in a lot of places, but there's a lot of deep cracks and uh, voids in this cheap plywood. Um, and a lot of knots. And they don't fill very well with the paint initially, at least. But at least every surface is uh, painted, and I've got them upended, so I've also painted the what's now the top was the bottom before. I've also picked up a couple of more handles that I forgot to buy at the hardware store before and these are the ones that will go on those um, uh, side rails to give me a better grip on them when I'm pulling them out uh, withdrawing the pins from the door frame. Alright, um, <clears throat> this is my third coat of paint. I put this one on nice and heavy with the roller. Uh, and it's still not going to fill all the cracks, but it's going to be as good as it's going to get. And uh, it used up about two-thirds of my second can of paint. I think there's just enough for a quick roller coat of the backside tomorrow once this gets nice and dry. As usual, I've got my heater fans going to keep this area a little bit above 70 degrees so the paint will dry properly. And the inner sides of the panels are rollered with uh, the remaining paint. I was running on fumes with it, but um, I didn't uh, feel the need to put on quite as heavy a coat here as I did on the outer sides. That will have to do. Okay, this particular model of fan um, comes with a pull chain switch which selects two different speeds alternately off on full speed off on half speed off and alternating in that cycle or maybe it's the other way around I think it starts out with full speed well it doesn't matter when there's an off in between it just depends where you start right uh, anyway so with the cover plate removed there you've got the switch and uh, they just give you a little pigtail of wire which comes out and they say oh no you gotta connect this up with conduit and uh, you cannot use a cord coming into it and if you do you're gonna void the warranty and then the uh, tech support guy who I double checked with on that called back and said oh we actually do have a model you had a C at the end and it has a, a you know a short power cord to be plugged into a wall outlet 
And then I'm looking at this and it comes with a cord grip instead of a conduit uh, fitting there. So it's clearly intended to have a cord go into it, not a conduit. So I think there's some discontinuity in the information being provided about this. Certainly it's okay to have a cord going into it if they make their own version of it, and certainly this one is set up to have a cord going into it, but not with these little pigtails. I don't know, even know how you'd use those. Um, unless you change this fitting and put another box next to this and then brought these in and then had a conduit, I don't know. It'd be a mess. Anyway, I'm going to pull these out of there, run my line cord in through the cord grip, and put some uh, connectors on there so that I can uh, connect all this up properly. All right, I've put the uh, power cords ground under the same lug as the wire from the motor. I've got a couple of female quick connects on those wires. I've put a couple male quick connects on the pigtails from the switch. These are technically a little undersized for the current, not too much. Um, and I have run it for, I don't know what it is, about 15 minutes and then checked just finger to see and I didn't really detect any warmth in it. So I think that um, I don't really have to worry about it for occasional short term use like I'm doing here. If I ever feel like I want to upgrade the power cord, that's why I put these quick connects on there instead of just a butt splice so I can just quickly yank the cord out and replace it with a heavier gauge one. All right, I had to replace those with the kind that actually fits. So I can plug these into them. Like that. Okay, there's the pull chain. My cord going in the cord grip. And it should be ready to rock and roll. All right, I've cut out these two straps of fairly thick one inch wide nylon web belt and used a hot nail to poke holes through and of course use the flame to seal the loose fibers on the ends. And now I'm going to mount those as the door manipulation handles. I'm using the straps for this because there's not much height uh, available um, when the door is folded into a sandwich board configuration to have anything that sticks up very high. But I still need to have fairly sturdy handles I can grasp just to maneuver the unfolded door into the door frame. Okay, I've got the uh, straps on here. The uh, screws went ever so slightly through the wood. Actually, just barely, just the tiniest nub. Uh, I knew it was going to be close, but the next shortest screw was a lot shorter and I wanted to get as much uh, of the meat in there as I could. So I'm just going to use my uh, Dremel grinding wheel just to take off any of that that sticks through. Okay, there it is in place without any of the hardware yet. Um, it looks like by the time everything is said and done, I'm just a little bit tight up here, but it does fit. So um, I think I'm going to leave it alone. Um, <clears throat> if I have trouble getting it in there in the future, I can always just trim a little bit of wood off the top on that corner. There's plenty of slop up on that side. I think the door frame is not completely square. Um, <clears throat> so since I have a gig to play in, I don't have a lot of time to screw around with this today. But I think I'm going to at least get these uh, rails in place and uh, drill the holes for those. Okay, there are those two side rails. I've offset the handles so I can get a better grip on them when they're um, up against the door. So there's just enough room there to get my fingers curled around for better grip. And that's so I can pull these out once the pins are in the door frame. And also just to manipulate them into position easier. Okay, those are in place now. So 
it's that easy to put them in there. But they can resist a lot of force in the sideways direction. Strong in the shear direction. And very quickly and easily removed um, if I want to get the door open or when I'm taking this thing down. All right, and the uh, Lexan window is screwed on with 16 screws. I made them stainless steel just because all the other hardware, at least screws and such, are stainless steel on this. They don't really need to be, but what the heck. Um, so I think the next thing to do is do a little painting. I had put this on my table saw and shaved off um, just a little bit at a shallow, shallow angle to get it to fit a little better in that corner. So I have a little bit extra paint since I used up everything else. I was able to get what I think is essentially the same paint in the really small can. And there's a couple strips of uh, weather stripping. This kind will squeeze down to essentially nothing, so it shouldn't cause a uh, any difficulty uh, when the sandwich board is swung to purely vertical. And I also put a strip around the cutout for the fan. All right, I've driven in the carriage bolts. It'll act as studs. Down there and a couple more there and there. And they've uh, been pulled in nice and flat. Uh, now I have to prepare the, um, the star nuts that will go on these. All right, here are the four star nuts I bought. These things are ungodly expensive at the Ace Hardware. They're about $9 a piece for a little piece of plastic. Yeah. Probably could have found something on Amazon for a few cents a piece, but that would have been a lot harder to pick out. And I needed to make sure I got the recesses in there correctly sized to the um, quarter 20, well, the number, uh, the quarter inch rather. The threads are irrelevant. Uh, nuts that had to fit in there precisely. I mixed up a little bit of epoxy and I put just a little bit down inside there, just a dab. And I've got the nut and I've got a nut driver that's smaller so I can use it to push the nut in. And there it is inside. Do three more like it. Okay, all those are done. All right, now I've got a test fit of the fan um, with the star nuts going over the studs in the frame. And the, uh, the outer side of the fan assembly with the um, the shades or whatever they're called in the closed position. Okay, another test fit. Now that I've got the top trimmed and I've got these side rails in place, that's holding it in nicely. I now have to uh, work out the size of the shims that are gonna go in here to wedge the uh, this panel up against the rear edge of the door. So that's the next step. So it looks like just another piece of that uh, select pine that's an inch and a half square is about a perfect fit to go in here. So I'll cut some bigger pieces of that. All right, I've got my two hinge side shims with uh, handles on them, so once I push them in there, I can get them back out. 
Okay, that's how these fit in there. Just pull them out whenever I want to. But um, this door isn't moving when I'm pushing on it here. It's just barely moving. So this technique of shimming it from the edges seems to be working quite well. I've got a good fit along the top and bottom. Um, next thing to do is put on the hinges. And okay, the hinges are on now. And I was concerned that this window wouldn't be big enough, but it's plenty to get a view outside. Let a little bit of light in. Okay, so the fan has this grab on the top. By putting my knee on the back of the motor, I can get the bottom aligned and then just push it forward. And the studs present themselves. Where's the hole? Come on. There. Quick and easy job of mounting the fan. Alright. And one pull. Shutters open up very nicely. Here is my uh, front door on the opposite side of the house. And normally if I just open the door, um, it just stays where it is, but... You can probably hear the wind. It takes quite a bit of effort to push the door shut against the the draft of the fan so if I just leave that open a little bit all right there it is looks pretty decent from the outside the shutters are nice and open there's a definite breeze out here it's like I'm in a small gale the door feels really solid. Pull it again. That's even more powerful. That was the low speed I had it on before. So that demonstration I just did was with it on the low speed. I lost track of where this um, motor was in its high off, low off sequence. So that draft was with the low speed. I think that's more than enough. My only concern here is when I ran it like that for a few minutes, I started smelling natural gas in the basement. Um, and I believe the furnace was on at that point. Normally I turn the furnace off if I'm painting down here. I don't want it to, uh, you know, combust the volatiles from the painting um, that haven't yet been exhausted. Um, but I didn't think there would be a problem just running the fan. Um, so I'm kind of surprised at that. Um, I think that the, the draft was so strong that it was able to pull some natural gas away from the uh, the burners in the furnace and uh, I gotta talk to my HVAC company about that before I actually use this I hope that that isn't a, uh, a real problem if I just turn the furnace off hopefully it'll be safe I'll put a label on here you know turn off furnace before running fan um, otherwise that part of it seems to be a success all right, um, so the way I take it out of there is I grab the two strap handles and pull it inwards 
but I can't pull it inwards very far because the top of the door hits, you know, the door is taller than the suspended ceiling, but I do have this area where there's no suspended ceiling. So once I get the door or this panel inboard of the frame, then I pull the top strap down so that it kind of buckles this assembly slightly so I can get it past the suspended ceiling and then just sort of lay it down on its side on the floor like it is here and uh, then hopefully it will fold up nice like a sandwich board which it does it does not hit the the handles or anything else there's enough clearance and that's because of these strips that I put in top and bottom there's a little bit of warpage there but that's to be expected the only thing I still have to put on here are the handles I use to transport it within the basement. So that'll be the last step. And I found that uh, the door was just, this panel was just a little tight where it cleared the latch plate. Um, so I'm going to actually just trim the edge of the wood a little bit in that area. There's my trimmed area. I have to repaint that a little bit. Now the last step is to put the carrying handles on it, which I'm going to put on this side. It's actually below the window, but folded. It's on top of the window. And high enough that it's into the uh, plate here, I think. Nope, I forgot. The, um, the handles have to be a little lower. For one thing, I want to be able to have my arms stretched out, more or less, um, at the low position of the handles before I lift it. Otherwise, I'm lifting too much but the wrong part of the arm for something that has any significant weight. And also, the I'm using through screws with uh, nuts on the other side and washers, and they're only long enough to go through one thickness of wood, not two. So I forgot that that was the decision I made earlier, so now I have to find the locations of the handles, drill and mount those. All right, there is the sandwich board with the carrying handles on it. And um, <clears throat> they go through to fender washers with uh, nylock nuts on the back. So I didn't have to use star washers on there. So the only thing I really have to do on this thing besides store it away is to uh, touch up where I trimmed the wood and a couple other spots where I want to put a little extra paint on it. So just a bit of a coda on this video, um, because of the episode where I smelled a little bit of uh, what I took to be propane smell, um, or at least um, an exhausty smell when I was running the exhaust fan without any uh, windows or doors or anything in my home opened up, um, I decided to call my HVAC installer and dealer uh, who had installed my furnace and asked their tech support person about it and uh, talked in detail and uh, he said yeah you're not drawing in any gas um, unburned propane almost certainly but what you are doing is because you're making your house negative pressure compared to the outside and you don't have any doors or windows open uh, you're enough negative pressure that it overcomes the draft fan that makes sure uh, exhaust from the combustion of the the fuel in the furnace uh, goes up the chimney. He said you're overwhelming that with the uh, negative pressure caused by the exhaust fan and it's reverse drafting and you're bringing in exhaust fumes. It's from propane or it's from LP um, it's not as bad as it would be with some other things, but you still don't want to do it that way. And we discussed various options, and ultimately what I plan to do is, when I, anytime I use the, uh, do painting in my basement using paint with volatile, uh, fumes coming off of it, like lacquers, um, I always shut off the furnace anyway, 
uh, and then I immediately, after I'm done painting, I open up the door and put a couple box fans in it to try to vent the light and ventilate the place out. But now with this exhaust fan, since it's much more powerful, um, the recommendation is to, yes, still turn off the furnace. And um, they have the option, since the painting itself only takes 5, 10, 15 minutes at the outset, you know, either if the if the fan being on doesn't cause a problem with the spray painting process itself, then go ahead and run the fan. If it doesn't, then leave the fan off, do the painting, and then open a door or a window at the far side of the house or across the basement, uh, and uh, then run the fan for a while. And only after the fan is shut off, then turn the power switch on the furnace back on. Uh, the other thing that could possibly be an issue is the uh, the hot water heater, which they also installed. It's a pretty nice model, and uh, he said that would not be a problem there. Although you could still draw uh, air down the chimney um, by itself, the hot water heater won't care much about that. But uh, it has various safety protocols built into it. Uh, one of which is to deal with negative pressure situations. So he felt that the water heater would not be an issue, but as far as the furnace went, uh, it would be better to have it shut off um, anytime the fan, the exhaust fan is operating and then turn it back on and preferably have uh, a door or window somewhere open to uh, admit fresh air in an amount uh, that is close to what the uh, CFM of the fan is. So that was the way that worked out. Just thought I'd add it to the video.